so with this character, I started with the hair. Almost all my sketches are from this angle. It's just easier. I could do the, the other the other side, but it's a little harder. I don't, I don't know. It's not harder. It's just uh, it doesn't feel as comfortable. You know, it's kind of left brain, right brain, left handed, right handed. Obviously, I have to draw figures from that side for for when I do the stories. But when I just sketch, it just seems the easiest to do it from this angle. And also her hair is parted from that side, at least uh, my, my version of the character is. And it's easier to draw that part going this way than, uh, it looks cooler when it goes across her face. Yeah, let's just say that. Okay, so I've got this arm socket, ribs down here. If you had to draw through the back goes like that. It's gonna also draw the center line Kind of go down her the middle of her uh, forehead, nose, not in between her upper lips, chin line, neckline, center of torso. You know what? What I don't like about this right now is it doesn't have a lot of personality in that. Um, looking kind of straight up and down. So what I'm going to do is get an eraser and just adjust it just slightly. Okay, I'm going to lightly erase it and then I'm going to bring that chin down. And this is an important thing I, I, I do notice in people's submissions um, to interject drama into the submission and a lot of it has to do with head angle, tilting it left and right, uh, but also tilting that chin down or up to uh, create different kinds of uh, moods and introspection in your characters. If you draw all your characters straight on, like this, where the camera is eye level, uh, it looks a little generic and a little flat. So right off the bat, by kind of tilting her head down, the hair falls more over her face, and it just looks a little, uh, you know, more dramatic, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Uh, if you've followed any of my streams before, you know I always start with like the eyebrows. And so. I was kind of drawing slowly and I kind of picked up the pace just imperceptibly, imperceptibly. And the idea is uh, that this, this is a quick sketch. I want to keep that energy in the line. And so um, that's often dictated by how fast I, I work on the piece. So if I draw very slowly like this, it will give me kind of a dead line. Uh, if you go to my Instagram account at Jim Lee Art, there's my two most recent Batman posts. There's one. Um, which I like a lot, which is a straight on shot. And that was done very, very quickly with the line work and tell. And then there's one, uh, I think from the day before or the same day, hours before, where it was more meticulous, more, there was more cross hatching. And, uh, and that was done with a slower uh, pace. All right, so you get two very different outcomes. Very kind of you. On the software, uh, we've been ordering uh, green screens. We've got these green screens that are coming in that I want to play around with and basically sort of trap the background and get rid of it. Probably need a new, uh, some sort of mic or some freestanding microphone for my home office here to improve the, the quality of the audio. Getting my daughter who lives in Korea set up as well. She's got a laptop. 
she plays a, a Overwatch mostly at the PC cafes there, but she's like diamond level. So I'm real curious to kind of watch her play that game. I'm sure it's going to be pretty, pretty interesting. Okay. I want to kind of make the eyes a little like like she's pursing or squinting just a little bit more like she's kind of staring you down so I, I do this by kind of like raising the bottom lid maybe a little bit more of a furrow brow um, this these are pigma micron this is a 0.8 these are permanent markers I think there's value in kind of letting everyone see the process. I think for the people that are that, that sub and, and want that kind of firsthand feedback, it's more about getting the feedback for your work. Uh, and it still would be it would be like if if I were reviewing your your work at a at a con and there were people like standing around watching. Um, and I've done it in panels too at conventions like that. Uh, and the whole idea is that. Uh, not only are you, are you getting feedback, but um, possibly other people around you are learning as well. Okay. Man, how did that beard pop out a little bit? I'm spending too much time on this. Okay, uh, so today what do I got lined up? Um, I have this one huge mural piece that I've been working on consistently over time. Last week I kind of showed you some layouts to it, and so today I'm going to jump back on that after this and actually finish, get into like the pencils for one of the figures there. And then after that, I went to Paris uh, for a bit of work for the donation. It's very awesome. Um, and where we met with uh, Enrico Marini, and we talked about uh, Batman Dark Prince Charming. Did some press for that project, oh, actually all day. Which, like, by, by the end of it, I was like, oh. <laughs> um, So for, for radio, uh, online, uh, print, that kind of thing. This is a uh, prints and art brush. I've got this random brush. This is a number four br uh, brush, which dictates the kind of width of the of the uh, the tip there. Paris is actually probably one of my favorite cities in the world. It's just gorgeous. I just love walking around and exploring that city. But um, we had kids back home that were not with us, obviously, because of school, and we try not to be away from them too long. As is as it is, I think I was gone for eight or uh, eight days, nine days, and my wife, who came to meet me in Poland, uh, was gone for a week. So looking forward for us to get back. And then I'm out again in two weeks to go to New York Comic Con. So you can see how it all kind of adds up if you're on the road a lot, um, not being around for your, your family. And thankfully, we have a lot of cousins and family in town that are able to help out when we're out. Oh, you know what? You guys are getting a nice view of my hat. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So that you guys get a clear shot overhead. So I apologize for that. That's weird. I don't think that happened before. So with the with, so with the inking of the hair, I'm not just inking the whole amorphous blob black, um, creating kind of rhythmic patterns between large black areas like this, maybe a thin white area, 
and then maybe another larger chunk there. And then it also flares out at the, at the base. It gets wider at the bottom because the light source is up here, and so the bottom parts kind of carry more of that shadow. And that just creates a bit of volume. It creates this sense of three-dimensionality that uh, this hair doesn't exist in a flat plane. It actually kind of comes forward and backwards and junk like that. And actually, when you get towards the bottom, you might as well just go ahead and make it Okay, and then she's got this kind of, I don't know, it's not spandex, it's not leather, it's some sort of superhero material that is reflective but protective. Maybe it's leather, I don't know. I don't know how comfortable that would be. So what I'm doing with this, it's just something that's always existed in comics because it looks cool to be able to do these kind of reflective things, but how, pra how practical is it in real life, really? And why this fascination with real life? Why does it have to work in real life? Why do we want our characters to exist in real life and work in real life and you do know that if you attach a grappling hook to a skyscraper and swing off of it from 50 feet 50 stories up you might rip your arm out maybe i don't know if you swing across the city maybe i don't know someone go out there and test it out Now define uh, Psylocke's butter knife. Winston giving some talk at the university. Uh, it's open to the public, I believe. Well, it's all done through DC. They have some way of doing it so that it's fair-ish or fairer. So it's not just first come, first serve at the signing itself. I think you have to come in earlier you get a wristband, and then that way you're guaranteed of actually getting something signed later in the day. I actually have uh, a bunch of my kids were into manga, manga characters, uh, and so there's one I'm actually inking over my daughter Sienna's work. I'm, I'll pull that out for uh, next time. I'll show you kind of the progress of that. She draws very meticulously and cleanly, and so um, you know I'm going to ink it all with a pen, and uh, it's just going to be. And she also draws a lot of detail, so. So yes, I do draw the eye in, and then I do cover it. That way I'm, I know exactly where it is as opposed to thinking I know where it is. Cool. Thank you very much, though. I appreciate it. All right. Oh, um, and then we got those straps, right? Fill in most of the 
casting. I also ordered a stand for this camera. Supposedly it arrived while I was traveling. Amazon said it was left by the door. Could not find it. But it'll be on a different stand that's not connected to the table, so when I draw like this, it won't shake the camera. but also it doesn't give me like the cleanest line. The other side is very smooth but too slick and I, and the, the lines kind of tend to smear on the other side so I'd rather have toothier finish than a than a slick finish there. a pad of Bristol board in there. I did a sketch for my interpreter and I gave her the um, I gave her the sketch pad. I took the paper out and gave her the sketch pad for the cardboard at the back for protection to kind of keep her sketch from getting damaged. And then I didn't want the paper to get damaged so I uh, put it inside a a sketchbook from Auto Trimmer. A complicated answer as to why I'm drawing on a complex backing board. Many shadows actually of the hair across. This is the sum total of my psychic frustration of this morning. It's 10 in the morning. The sketch should have taken 15 minutes. Explain spotting blacks. All right, so the black shapes here. Uh, look, um, if you are drawing anything, let's try and explain this to um, my son, if you were drawing, for example, everything is an apple. There's a light source over here. Your core shadow is going to be right here, meaning that's where it's going to be the darkest. So that's where you spot your black shape. There might be a bump here, limitation, so you might get another shadow that goes like this. If the light is higher up, maybe the shadow actually is more like this. This is where it's darkest on the apple. The reason why, and if it's really strong, this black will go all the way to the edge of that apple. But the reason why there's usually a highlight on the other side is that this light, or its rays, the rays hit a wall. They bounce off the wall. They will bounce up off the floor and they reflect a very weak light onto the back side of that apple. So you have a lot of light here, and you have rim lighting or back lighting or bottom lighting, reflected lighting uh, coming off the side. And you see that in a lot of photo shoots. They'll, they'll have a model there that have the photographer, and then you'll see someone with like a big silver piece of foil or white paper, and they're basically holding it like this, like this, and that's to catch the sunlight and bounce it up so they underlight the area so you don't have all these terrible like shadows underneath your eyes that make you look tired or old or whatever. So you're out there in the light, the light is casting shadows and they basically, it's called fill light. And so they'll take this thing and put it right here. The light bounces off and it starts filling in some of the shadows. In fact, you might even see it here. Does it work? Let me look. Does it? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me if it does. So if you think about even a shoulder, you can think about it as an apple, right? Take that and, and just kind of put it into here. Thank you, Mabel. 
all right? Light source over here. So where's that shadow go? It goes right there. Okay. Hey, I have an apple for a shoulder. Now the the bicep, it's kind of a longer apple. Maybe it's a banana. A banana. Same thing. Light hits it about three quarters of the two thirds of the way over. You get a shadow. That's your core shadow. You have reflected light coming off the other side. And that's your shadow right in here. Okay. And then you have another banana that goes over here. Same concept. And then you want to connect these shadows up like that. And then you can render out of the shadows to create grays. Right? We can create cross hatching to create more variations, textures, whatever. Okay. So if you have a breast there, same thing, core shadow like runs around here. Set the light sources over here for the for the purposes of this explanation. All right? And now you have the rib cage, which is a funnel type shape, so the funnel is going to have a core shadow about right there. All right, if you were to draw a a drum with apples floating in it, everything's apple related, right? It's the fall. The core shadow is right there if the light source is over here. This is the rim light or side light there. Okay, and if there's Light on both sides, you get the double light effect. You get a core shadow on each side. One's the, this is the stronger dominant one. This is the weaker one. Does that make sense? Everyone say yes. Banana boo. Yes. Great. That's what I wanted you to learn. Everything is apples. Yes. Yes. Everything is apples. Yay fruits. Perfect. Great. I feel like we're all learning something. Time wisely spent together. So that's what we've got going on here. All right? Except I didn't put this shadow in. I could have. I mean, I still can. I could do it in pencil. All right? That's what it would look like. And it's all personal pr preference. I mean, I could go ahead and drop that shadow in as uh, a real black shape there, you know. Um, I'm going to choose to keep it, um, I'm going to choose to keep it uh, in pencil for now. This is a sketch. I like sketches that you can see the pencil work and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so going back to the whiteout here, random sketches at panels uh, and online. I, I, I don't take requests and just, there's not enough time for it, so I apologize. Sorry. So now I'm just kind of adding some white out effects in the hair. And that just kind of breaks up the black shapes a little bit. And these lines basically create the illusion that you're looking at hair rather than white and black lines on a piece of paper. Trial and error, I don't know how how many lines to put. You do several and then you might put too many and you'll be like, oh that was too busy and you'll stop. So it's through practice, just kind of after a while you realize, okay, um, that number looks good. And where to put them, etc. These are reflections, lights above, that kind of thing. Uh, this is done. So 
197. I guess away from keyboard, there's 423 people or so. All right, finally hit 200. Okay. I've now successfully, hopefully, hidden up that design flaw. Nice fix. Keep calm and white on, white out on. Sorry, it's not my best material. It's very early on a Sunday. Okay. Give a man white out and he will find things to fix. I apologize for damaging the top part of the illustration. Okay.